Good day folks, I'm back. Last week I shot some clay testing to check for expansion of slugs. Today I'm back to do a little bit more of that. But what I'm going to try and do today is to get a hunting scenario going. In other words, if I shoot a target at 100 meters, what will the velocity be of that slug? at 100 meters and I'm going to simulate that. So I did a lot of scientific calculations, actually Strelok did a lot of scientific calculations to determine if I shoot at 30 meters what the speed will be at uh, from impact up to uh, the 30 meters, what the impact speed is. I also had to calculate the muscle velocity um, at 100 meters and do a few nice calculations regarding that to get it exactly right but I'll post all of that as I go along in the video one thing I need to reiterate guys this is not a sponsored channel I don't get money from anybody I don't get paid to do this this is purely out of love of the sport and because I'm having a ball of a time in this regard I've had a couple of guys asking me to do clear ballistic gel test <laughs> guys those stuff is extremely expensive and I simply can't afford it that's the reality of it and that's the downside of not having a sponsored channel or having somebody looking after your pocket so today I'm going to shoot back at my clay I'm going to set it up in a couple of minutes I just wanted to make this video before I started getting messy and just the last thing in this regard I am not shooting down any any manufacturer guys i'm as excited as anybody else when i'm shooting i'm a little little boy so if i make a comment that some of the manufacturers might find offensive or whatever i do apologize up front but this is my reaction this is a first take photo or first take video i do not get a second chance to relook at the video material as you guys see it is the exact same as i experienced it firsthand and that's my promise to the guys watching my channel i don't do retakes i don't do second chances i give the slugs the pellets whatever i use one chance and one chance only and that's the first impression and that is what you're going to see on the channel so if you want me to do retakes and retakes and amend the results then you have to pay and nobody is going to do that so let's stick to honesty let's stick to first impressions and this is my own personal experience let's have some fun time for our quiz of the day which slug belongs to which slug you can choose which one do you think expanded the most i'll give the answer right at the end first up the dirty work again clay preparation so i left the clay in black wrap plastic wrap in plastic bags to keep it moist to make sure that the consistency stays the same and it doesn't dry out on me so probably in the next half an hour i'm just going to spend on these babies getting them perfect for the experiment and i've discarded of my jacket already because this is elbow grease and it takes a lot of sweat to prepare hang in there Waar die kleintjie so, dan stamp ek om, dan rol ek om af, en stamp ek om weer, en ek rol om weer af. Moet ook thuis die baksteen lijk? Moet die baksteen lijk, maar jy moet nie die van die tafel raak, want dan gaan jy die tafel vuil maak. Nee. Die kleintjie bliks are done. Time to go and set up the targets. Thanks to my little Alfie on my right hand side for helping me. And he's also my son, so I'm, I've got an elfish son. Awesome! First up, h and ends. I'm just going to let the regulator settle quickly and then straight into the clay. Next up, javelins, 26 grainers. Last one, JSB knockouts. Time to get messy! With the messy part, it's always fun. So looking at the back of the clay, 
luckily this time no exit wounds so I know I'm gonna get back my slugs looking at the front of the clay there's a nice variety of entry wounds from the JSBs on the right hand side which is almost very round to the slightly more messy javelins and to this massive cavity with the H&Ns so let's cut it open and see what the results are first and foremost I just need to find the right track the entry wound and the cavity or the length of the actual penetration into the clay and you can see here the nice bubble that the javelins made so this tells me up front that there was some massive expansion on the inside and a big cavity can't see a bubble on the JSBs though but we'll probably see when I open up the clay Dum dum dum. <laughs> Oeh, morsig al hier daar. Waar is die stikkie? Kijk het alle keer die loos stikkie lood uit. Dis hoe kom jylle het op? Ah, hier is die H&N. Oeh, dis hoe, hoe kom jylle het op? It didn't, ex didn't expand. It looks like a solid, solid piece of slug. I'll wash it and check it out later. The 26 gr- Ah, now look at this. Looks like a little pear. Pear shaped. Look at that versus that. Can you see the expansion or the depth? Narrow expansion and then the very deep or cavity like expansion here, but it didn't penetrate a heck of a lot. And again, I've got a flat little, flat little slug over here. Okay, now for the knockouts. Oh, that's not bad. The knockouts actually surprised, slowing down a nice big cavity not as big as the javelins penetration a little bit more but this is now the weird thing look at the amount of lead left at the end of the slug if I compare that with the javelin and the H&N now that's what happens at a hundred meters that one expands small little cavity not a deep penetration this one, big, big cavity, massive, massive flat didn't there. And the H&Ns just keeps on going and going and going. This is like my, the opposite of my bank account that doesn't want to keep on going and going and going. All right, time to put some elbow grease in here and go and redo the test. Mezzy, mezzy. <laughs> sure, that's hard labor. I should get paid for this, I think. Mm. All right. We're going down to the 23 grainers, the rex tip. If you remember from the previous video, this is the one with the orange ball in there. Then I'm going to go down to the G2, also in 23 grain. Power setting one, because I want to run them slightly slower, or not slower, at the same speed as the 25 grainers. And then I'm going to shoot the Inferno 25.4 grainers into the play as the last one. I'll uh, up the power a little bit again, just shoot a couple of shots for the regulator to settle, and then we'll look at the results. Rick's the clay. <laughs> That's fun. G dues. Center of center. Infernos, twenty five point four grain. Right, let's go and have some fun. Time to get messy. Always nice to see that there's no exit wounds again, so I'll be able to retrieve the slug. Yippee! Okay. Right, interesting to note the different entry holes. Inferno Rex tip. Quite interesting as well, the moment I shot this, you could actually see pieces of lead coming out of the clay everywhere as that one totally disintegrated. The G2s, I can't describe what that is, it's not round, but it's a hole. And the Inferno 25 grain is the perfect little hole. Time to murder the clay again. <laughs> is it big vicious? Oopsie. Okay. Let's see if I can find the track. 
way, oopsie. Last one. Uh, straight through. Uh, say. Right. Let's start there at the point, the side. I have my good one. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Look at the Rex tip. Again, totally disintegrating. There's a piece of lead there. I saw you. There's the ball. I found the ball again. That's the little orange little ball that's in the middle. And this time I can actually get the balance of the lead out. It's not much, but I've got it. Isn't there any more? Wait, there's more. There's the rest of it. But as you can see, it disintegrated into many, many smaller little pieces. Ah, oh, there's a nice little solid piece and there's another piece there. It's totally buggering up my clay. But that was a decent cavity. Right, we we'll just put that marker there at what is left of the target. Okay, now the G2s. Let's have a look at this baby. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, breaking it open. Slightly elongated entry wound at the slower speeds, but the slug is in pieces as well. That's probably the outside of the slug. Where's the rest? Ah, oh, there it is. There's the rest of the slug. Okay, so it did its damage. Yes, I'll have to get some glue to piece it all together. Slightly long um, cavity, but a nice expansion for a 23 grain slug. Having a look at the last one, the Inferno is 25.4. Just move my marker there. The expansion is not very big, but it didn't go in that deep, which is quite interesting and easy to find the slug in this one. Still a lot of lead behind, so it means that the slug, the, the hardness of the lead is a little bit too hard. It doesn't expand in totality, it doesn't flatten out at impact at 100 meters. But nevertheless, I'm impressed. I'm impressed with all the slugs. Accuracy is quite good. Hitting power quite good. Messy quite good. <laughs> all right, let's summarize and I'll give you guys the results. Still remember our quiz? Let's see if you got it right before I go into the summary to explain exactly what happened to whom. With this shot, you can actually see how much lead is left after impact. HLNs, JSBs, Javelins. So this is where the tacky hits the tar. So those are my six examples. Oh, from the left, Rex tip, and you can see there's only pieces of that slug left. Second one was the G2 23 grainers. That's all that is left of that little slug. And you can see there is some bit of lead still behind it. Then we go over to the Inferno's 25 grainers. Interesting to note here is the front of the slug. It actually has a small little indent like that. It expanded quite nicely, but still a lot of lead left behind it. If I now go over to the H&Ns, the 25 grainers, there is very, very little flatness in that. There is a lot of lead left behind the slug. It didn't expand at all, and that was why it penetrated the deepest of all the slugs. So from a penetration point of view, <laughs> yeah, that one goes the furthest. With that, a warning, whenever you hunt with H&Ns, make double sure that you've got a backstop behind your target because these slugs go straight through. They do not expand. Oopsie. Looking at the JSB knockouts, now this was a very, very nice surprise for me. Look at that nice expansion. Also, a lot of lead left behind it. But overall, second biggest cavity on the day. Also a nice little indent in the front there when you look at that. Oh my, nails are full of clay. And then the clear winner of the day when it came to expansions, the Javelin 26 grainers. Again, the same as we saw with the 30 meter test at higher speed. Perfect, perfect expansion. 
there's almost nothing left behind that little slug it did its job beautifully this little baby takes it when it comes to expansion so for the guys at, G at uh, Javelin well done you did your research and that is what you built the slugs on for expansion purposes next up I'll probably have to relook at my table when it comes to choosing my final slug and I'll keep you guys posted in the next video before we go I need to say a big thank you to all our slug manufacturers out there you guys sit with basically the perfect conundrum how do you match accuracy with maximum expansion and I know that's a very very difficult puzzle to solve so for the guys out there building the slugs redesigning the slugs designing the slugs Hang on there guys, we do appreciate your effort. All the best. That's all folks.